Hot off the press this morning, Victoria 3 is changing, and in this video we're going to take a look at the new features, improvements and interface coming to Victoria 3's open beta, update 1.2 after Paradox revealed it all. And I have a feeling that much like an onion, there are many layers to this update and the beta, and they'll probably make some people cry. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into the video once of course we get our YouTube housekeeping and this and that out of the way, we'll jump straight in. And I think it makes sense to start by actually acknowledging how Paradox reflected on the last update and the messiness around legitimacy, where they say that while they were happy with the reception to the first big patch, there were a few sticky points. Some players remembering it fondly, others, quote, perhaps not. The key thing here to note is that they mention how they changed legitimacy many times after they released patch 1.1, the first big update that came out last year. Now, of course, we're looking to patch 1.2 two, the second major update to Victoria 3, and of course the first one for 2023. Their problem then is how do we integrate somewhat complicated changes into Victoria 3 without completely upending the game, ruining people's experiences, and ultimately alienating some of the community by constantly shifting and changing things that aren't really necessarily ready to be pushed out. Their solution, if you haven't heard already, is that they're going to launch update 1.2 into our grubby little hands as an open beta. Available, of course, for everyone to play, but the idea here is it gives them a little bit more flexibility. We'll have this new version, we'll talk about the changes, of course, in just a minute after they revealed all, but also we'll be able to swap back to the existing version of Victoria 3 at the time of recording this video, 1.1.2, I believe. Bounce back there for more stable plays, or bounce into the open beta and discover what it has to offer. They're approaching it in a really interesting way, but of course it's important to note that it comes with a warning. Expectations shouldn't be that we should expect a buttery smooth experience, especially not in week one. And I say week one because their approach to how they're rolling out this beta is a little bit different than what I might have expected, just to slap it on and let them go loose. Uh, we'll talk more about the interesting structure of it and how they're sort of procedurally going to roll it out uh, later in the video, because I think it's important that we take a look at the headline news. What are the big changes? Well, with a small disclaimer that it is subject to additions and change and not an exhaustive list, here are the big changes. As you can see, there are five key features being introduced into the game, as well as arguably some potentially more exciting improvements and interface changes. That's the big three headline categories. Now let's take a look at a little bit more detail. We'll start of course with the new features, and here there are five big key ones to go through. I'll leave them down the bottom of the screen, except for when we've got more important things to look at, like with the autonomous investment system. Remember this one? I've talked about it already in last week's update video if you'd like a full sweep, but basically it will give us the option by default on to turn on autonomous investment pool, a way to fund private construction, that is buildings that we don't build ourselves, inside of our nation, depending on our country's laws. The country's laws, of course, factor into this as well, and sweeping changes across the board to the economic laws in Victoria 3, but it's all suited around that private finance pool, right, where your populations can earn dividends, yield money, income, whatever, from their buildings, and then put that back into your economy. It is a pretty exciting feature, and I'm keen to see how it plays out. The second one on the list, another big one, a really meaty change potentially, is that strategic objectives will be available for planning military campaigns. This one has my interest in particular, and I'm keen to jump into the gameplay once I can and really check it out. Uh, important to note, they did have a little caveat, a bit of extra detail. They said that some features will be less mature uh, in the beta than they will be at the full release of the update for once it actually properly goes live. Strategic objectives is one of those, which will be limited to one per country during the beta, but the intent is to expand it out and allow for us to designate multiple strategic objectives before those military campaigns during it's fantastic to see uh, the simmered down version during the beta will allow us to try it out and give them feedback of course uh, the final three things on the features list here uh, are fairly self-explanatory or we don't have a lot of further information which of course could also go for that strategic objectives narrative uh, moving into the third one you can see it's customizable notification settings i've played with a few mods that let you filter between uh, shall we say serious kind of serious and don't get out of bed for notifications and I think that that kind of filtering will be really useful. Uh, next we have an in-game music player, fantastic, I'm sure there will be players out there who are really pleased with that, not personally, uh, something that I'll likely to use 
maybe ever, but we'll see. Uh, and then last but not least on our features list, we have key rebinding. Uh, potentially a twofold winner. Firstly, maybe a quality of life improvement. The keys just aren't quite right for you and you like something that's a little bit better for your hands or your setup. Uh, but more importantly, of course, and leading into that, it could be a very impactful accessibility change. I can't speak too much to that myself, but it could be very important for many players out there. So nice to see that coming in and as a headline feature in the update. Moving through to some of the juicier details though, these overarching sweeping changes, improvements and bug fixes. And I think that if you're a diehard player or even just a casual player of Victoria 3, actually, these will maybe impact your game in game-changing ways far more so than most of the features that we've already covered, if, and that's a big if, they are introduced successfully. First up, we have performance optimization, one of the things I hear about the most in the comments section below, and something that I haven't had to deal with too much myself, because A, if I want to play in 1936, you'll probably find me in Hearts of Iron 4, and B, I tend to prefer the earlier game my system is fairly capable and can definitely handle it while I record, but if we can get some late game improvement fixes, that is going to be massive. Uh, second up on the list, and equally massive, we have improved AI handling of you know, the game, <laughs> uh, economy and military, as well as their port management, another somewhat sticky issue throughout many Victoria 3 updates. Moving along to the third item on our list, this one I've covered uh, in the same video with some of the previous economic changes that I talked about at the start of the video with the private investment. Uh, basically, we're getting new economic laws that are built around that private investment pool and leveraging more or less money into it. And also a new one as well, a more uh, cooperative economy, say. Uh, fourth on the list, and this could be a game changer like one and two, more realistic modeling of trade route profits and of GDP. Here, the devil is in the detail, and I should add one asterisk, that while they've revealed everything, we've got the graphic, we've got the key line changes, we know when the beat is coming and all the rest, which I'll cover in the final chapter of the video, of course, what we don't yet have are some of the nitty gritty details around performance optimization or around this point how are they adding more realistic modeling to gdp there have been hints here and there and some discussions but the real nitty gritty detail the coding the specific changes will likely come over the coming week or two as they continue to roll out this beta and constant updates and some of the back-end information behind it the fifth thing on the list is worldwide arable land revisions. That's the amount of arable land is being revised across the map. And crucially, migration is being balanced as well. A migration, of course, the movement of people. Another somewhat sticky issue in Victoria 3. Not quite working as intended in all cases. The laws are a little bit sticky. The uh, movement of people and, of course, their cultures and politics can be a little bit broken in Victoria 3. And then lastly, on our list of what I'm hoping, and of course it's a big if, if these are implemented properly and successfully, uh, it can be very significant, is that mega parties are limited by tweaks to party formation logic and ideology. So those mega political parties have been tweaked a little bit and limited, so you might not have everybody jumping in and taking sweeping political change. And that concludes the list of improvements. However, arguably the interface changes are also improvements. Let's take a quick look at those. But first, let's have a quick break. Relax. Pet your cat. Have a drink of water. Enjoy some goofy AI artwork. Go on, you know it's fun. All right. Back to it. Ah, that was too much fun. All right, back to the interface. And as you can see, there are a load of changes, maybe less impactful on the gameplay, unlike those ones that we just talked about before, uh, but they should all maybe have a bit of a quality of life improvement at the very least, as well as a few other tweaks around the side. The first one on the list is that the trade panel will be overhauled for easier route management. This has been teased a little bit already on Twitter and a couple of other places. We've talked about it. It looks like a slimmed down version, very similar to some mods that already exist. Uh, next up we have more clarity on population needs, convoys, radicals, and loyalists. If we even just take the first one, pop needs, i.e. poor people are buying a lot of grain and alcohol, wealthy people are buying meat and luxury clothes, but how much? How much do they need? And how can I supply that to them if I don't know that information? It's so important. They've made good changes already. I'd like to see it brought out more. And more clarity for convoys, radicals, and loyalists sounds good. 
Third on the list we have visual updates to different map modes and lenses, such as for example showing infrastructure and employable populations when you're expanding your buildings. This just feels like it makes sense to me. Fourth on the list we have an outliner enhancement with a pinnable market goods and characters availability. And then last but not least, reduced notification spammage. We've talked about that already. Those are the interface changes that round out the sweeping changes that are coming to Victoria 3's update 1.2. The question of course is when and how, and as I alluded to at the start of the video, it's a little bit like an onion. There are going to be a few layers here. So, the features, the interface, the change, it's all coming to the open beta version on the 8th of February at 10 CET. It'll open up as an open beta branch 1.2 and be available to play for anybody who owns Victoria 3 on Steam. A forum post will accompany it and of course they're always looking for feedback on this kind of thing on their Discord and others. So if you're inclined to give that, you should. Uh, but don't forget, throughout this whole thing I've been relaying the fact embarrassingly that I'm so poor <laughs> I only have frozen onions in the house. And why? Well it's because it's not just a slapstick here's a beta good luck. There's a little bit more to it. After the initial release they plan on releasing additional beta updates on a weekly basis containing bug fixes, further performance improvements and adjustments that they've made according to our feedback and I'm sure of course things that they've noticed internally. The exact dates and timings around the weekly updates or improvements are yet to be revealed but it's safe to say that we should expect a somewhat of a, a slight refresh and improvement to the beta as we move through it and I like that because it adds a little bit more dynamic feel to it and it also gives us potentially a better opportunity to feed into that discussion and hopefully make change. Speaking of, the final change will be rolled out on March the 13th, so if you don't want to participate in the beta, at the moment all going well and after weekly updates, they're planning on rolling this bad boy out for everybody on March 13th. Thank you so much for joining me, I'll have more detail as we get it, see you next time.